Hi, you guys. Oh, I'm so excited to see you again. Today, we're going to be continuing the saga of Cliffhanger, Hifklanger, and our girl Katie. When we left them last, they were at the bank of Mermaid Lake. And a whole bunch of mermaids, a special kind of mermaid called Mermaids, who didn't speak but murmured underwater, had agreed to take them across the lake and to an island where Hifklanger and Cliffhanger might find more about their mom who had a thing for dragons. So, the swarm of tiny mermaids surrounded the boat, some underneath it and some on either side of it. <sighs> you guys, the lake was so beautiful, expansive, as wide as the sea and just as blue. It sparkled like diamonds in the sun. And it was so clear and still that you could look down and see straight to the bottom of it. What do you think lives at the bottom of Mermaid Lake? Take a second to draw it. I can wait. Are you back? Okay. And in the distance, in the far distance, like a dot, stood the island where Cliff and Hiff could learn about their mom. One of the mermaids, her name was Kathy, swam to the front of the pack as it slowly ferried the trio across the water and spoke. You're awfully polite, she said. And to the trio's surprise, they could understand her. What? what you speak English? Katie said. Well, of course I do. Kathy said. Why didn't you say anything earlier? We spent like an hour throwing a shout back and forth. Why'd you do that? Kathy said. I just wanted to play catch. <laughs> then, Kathy continued. You must have heard the stories about us. What stories? Katie said. Oh, you know that we lure sailors into shipwrecks with our beautiful song. Suddenly, Kathy's teeth began to elongate and they became long and sharp, as sharp as a needle at a doctor's office. Another murmur maid named Abernathy joined Kathy at the front. That we do it for fun. Abernathy said. The rest of the swarm stopped moving the boat and began to swim in a menacing circle around the boat. Kathy continued, and yet you trust such dangerous creatures to deliver you to your island unharmed. You do, don't you? I... Katie said. Kathy continued. Of course not. But then, you need us. And we do so want to help. But what's a relationship without trust? What do you want? Katie said. Kathy and Abernathy smiled at each other. Teeth glinting in the sun. Abernathy said. Let us sing to you. What? Katie said. You'd fall asleep and that would leave you completely in our hands. No fire breathing. And Kathy looked at Cliff. No infinite clown handkerchief. And she looked at Hiff. And no swinging that golf club around like crazy. She looked at Katie. You'd have to believe that we wouldn't hurt you. That's faith, baby. Amen, said another murmur maid. Abernathy said, come on. It 
it'll be easy. As easy as falling asleep in the snow. At this, Hiff shrugged and began to get ready to go to sleep. Wait, Katie said, and her hand shot out to grab Hiff by the wrist. Aren't you not supposed to do that? Isn't that like a sign of hypothermia? Yes, Kathy and Abernathy said together. Katie looked desperately at Cliff and the three of them huddled together in the middle of the boat. Katie was against the idea, but Hiff and Cliff really wanted to find out about their mom. They wanted so much to find out that they were willing to put themselves in danger. <sighs> okay, Katie said. I'll do this for my friends. And the three of them allowed the mermaids to sing them to sleep. The mermaids sang their song, as melodious as shattering glass, but somehow alluring, comforting. Katie, Cliff, and Hiff drifted off to sleep. <laughs> Katie awoke to find herself in her living room. I can't be at home, she thought, as she wandered through the empty house. Then she thought, oh, I must be in the dream dimension. That's why she had spotted a cupcake with a single candle in it on the dining room table. She walked toward it. Oh, she said. The dining room was decorated with colorful streamers and balloons. She sat at the head of the table. She had spent so many birthdays at this table. And if today were an ordinary birthday, her parents would be at her side. The table would be full of gifts and her friends would be there, smiling. Instead, she was alone. Katie began to cry. In another room, Cliff stood puzzled. He had been stripped of his snazzy suit and was instead wearing blue jeans and a white baggy t-shirt. Where is everyone? He thought. The room was stark white, like a blank page nobody had bothered to fill. Wow, this place is awfully big, he thought to himself. I could fit like three red cars in here. Hiff, was on a stage, looking out over a full house. The theater was quiet, the audience expectant. Hiff was briefly surprised. His agent hadn't mentioned any new shows and he had no routines planned, but he was a master improviser. He could come up with something. With a big smile, he put his hands on his hips and began to tap out a slow rhythm with his feet. Tap, 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 tap. The audience laughed and clapped and Hiff grinned and moved a little faster. And the faster he danced, the more his audience cheered and clapped. I could do this all day, he thought to himself. Tap, An hour had gone by, and Hiff was still tapping, but he was no longer smiling. <sighs> he was tired. The black suit he wore was damp with sweat, and it clung to him uncomfortably. He had undone the top two buttons of his shirt and thrown off his tie. The audience had grown rowdy. They were screaming, but Hiff couldn't tell if it was from joy or anger, and he suspected it didn't matter. On he danced, afraid to stop. Katie looked up. She'd heard a sound. 
she listened carefully and realised it was laughter. Or maybe screaming? People, she thought. She got up from her seat and followed the sound. Cliff had heard the sound too. Hey, he said out loud. Hey, are you laughing at me? He ran up and down the room with no doors and no walls, trying to find the source of the laughter. Hey, you wouldn't be laughing at me if you knew me. Don't let the jeans and t-shirt fool you. I'm very fancy. Hey, he said, I have a car that can fly, you know. I just I don't have it with me right now because I didn't drive here, you see. But whoever was laughing or screaming, it sounded like, didn't care. Please, Katie said, crying again. Please tell me where you are. Let me join you. Don't let me spend my birthday alone. She ran through her house and bam, bumped into Cliff. Oh, Cliff, she exclaimed and hugged him. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Yeah, you too, Cliff said. Do you hear that? He asked Katie. Do you know where it's coming from? No, Katie told him. But more importantly, where's Hiff? And just by saying his name, Katie and Cliff were transported to the auditorium, all the way in the back. Oh, there he is, said Cliff. And this is what I was hearing. What? is wrong with these people, Katie said, looking around. She and Cliff decided to force their way to the front of the theater, over the seats and the raging audience. When they reached the stage, Hiff, grateful, so grateful, rushed over to help them up. <sighs> we need to get out of here, Hiff said, out of breath. Stop! Please, everyone, stop, Katie yelled. Leave them, Hiff said, still dancing. It's no use. They wouldn't care what you had to say, even if they could hear you. They just want you to dance. Okay, then, Hiff, stop dancing. What? No, they'd kill me, us. No, we'll take them on together. We can't look for a way out of here with them in the way, and anyway, you're not their puppet. Hiff nodded and bravely stopped moving. They all held their breath. And then, boop, the crowd disappeared, and the three of them woke up to the blazing sun on their faces. They had made it to the island in the middle of the lake. They grinned at each other and group hugged. Katie walked up to the water where the murmur maids were waiting. Thank you, she said, for what you did. I see now that it was for our own good. You were trying to get us to face our fears, I think. No, we were going to drown you, Kathy said. We bit a bunch of holes into your boat. I guess our teeth were just too small. Bye. Okay. Katie rejoined Cliff and Hiff and the three of them walked up the beach. They arrived at the castle's tall golden gates and Cliff rang the intercom. <clears throat> this is Cliff Hanger, uh, son of an illustrious dragon and I and the gates slowly swung open and revealed a beautiful green lawn. A voice said over the intercom, Welcome, Mr. Hanger and guests. The answers you seek are up ahead. You may proceed. Oh, this is easier than I thought it would be, said Cliff. They took a step and the voice said, but we only allow two guests per meeting. Cliff said, oh, that's easy. Katie, stay here. We'll pick you up when we're done. Suddenly, guards in suits of armor 
came out of nowhere and grabbed Katie. The voice on the intercom said, Our remaining guest will be fed to the alligators. We do so hate food waste. <laughs>